Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about JSON encoding and decoding capabilities of the Go programming language. JSON support is provided by the standard library, and the package that contains all we need to get started is called encoding slash JSON. Let's have a look on the package's public interface. The function that is used for data encoding is called Marshall, as in computer science terminology, and data decoding function is unmarshal, respectively. Both marshal and unmarshal functions accept empty interface as an argument. This is because of the process involves a lot of reflection for field traverse, and type checks are made dynamically in real time. There are also new encoder and new decoder constructors if you plan to process a stream of JSON objects instead of a single object. Let's focus on the marshalling process. The JSON package knows how to marshal all the standard types like numbers, floats, string, time, all types that are composed of those. In case of data structures, JSON encoder will walk through recursively using reflection. We can marshal this example structure now. There, I will use marshal indent that is the same just as Marshall, but allows to specify indentation options, and will pretty print the output. JSON Marshall's return values are the JSON encoded data bytes and the error value. As you can see in the output, marshalling a structure will result in this JSON definition with the corresponding representation for each type. To override the field names in the schema, as well as to specify additional options, we should add struct tags. A struct tag value is a loosely defined string and is not checked at compile phase, so please be careful. You can specify the exact field name there, and you could also add some other options. For example, omnipty empty will exclude the field from the resulting schema if its value is zero. A special name dash can be used to always exclude the field from being processed. Another useful option is called string. It would allow to marshal numeric types as strings. Let's see all these options in action. For this example, we will empty the message and add an additional field as value. And let's check the output. So you can see, the ID is now a string, not numeric type. The message ignored because it's empty. And the timestamp is represented as an RFC timestamp. You could define or override Marshall logic for any type by implementing the Marshaller interface with Marshall JSON. So we can create a custom type for time and a touch of Marshall JSON meta with our custom logic for the timestamp format using our custom logic. Here, I decided to use a kitchen format, which will represent our timestamp as a kitchen clock. And don't forget to provide the code to the JSON string bytes. As you can see here, JSON encoder used our meta, and the timestamp is now formatted using our custom logic. Next, we move to the unmarshalling process. Usually, you would like to define the structure for JSON schema beforehand. So in marshalling would validate the data types before mapping the values. And marshalling is usually done by calling JSON and marshal function in the data and point to target structure. The struct tags are respected for specifying field names and the options. But Go is very strict on types. So the field cannot be both numeric and string at the same time. You have to work around for your schema if the API response is within the dynamic reroutes. To implement custom unmarshalling logic that will allow numeric types and strings in the same field, you have to conform the JSON unmarshalling interface, which contains just one method. You could define a custom type and attach a method in Marshall JSON 
which will handle all the logic extracting the code from bytes. In this code, we can add bytes into strings, cutting the quotes and trying to convert the data into a number. Now, let's check out how this custom type will work in the unmarshalling process. Yes, it works. The string is passed as a number. Usually, it's hard to define the layout for big schemas, but there are some tools to help you out with this, like the JSON and Go generator. It translates any JSON object into a Go struct with proper tags that is ready to be used for marshalling and unmarshalling. So, just copy and paste to any surfer response, and you will get on one screen a Go structure for the unmarshalling. Well, that's it. The most basic workflow with JSON and Go that covers about 90% of cases you might encounter in everyday Go practice. Enjoy, and thank you.